Hello ADV riders, stick around if you want to find out more about the Adventure Specs single track jacket. So I'm going to talk you through some of the features of the single track jacket, um, the stuff you'd expect there, it's waterproof, breathable, etc. and we'll get onto those. But the thing that I really get excited about with this jacket is the hood. Now, a hood, it's just a hood. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, you look at this and you look at a waterproof jacket and you go, of course, a waterproof jacket, it's got a hood, no big deal. But there are very, very few motorcycle jackets that have a hood. You could kind of understand why. Um, if you're riding a bike, you've got a helmet on, you don't need a hood, you need your jacket to be waterproof because you're riding through the rain, which is fine for most people. But as adventure riders, um, you and I know that you can ride for a multi-day trip, say if you're on the Trans-Euro Trail um, or you're riding backcountry in America or something like that. Um, and especially here in Northern Europe, you kind of never really know what the weather's going to do. So I would be reluctant to leave home for a week or a long weekend without planning on rain, here in England at least. Um, and if it's raining when you're on the bike, chances are it's going to be raining when you're off the bike and you're at camp. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't want to be putting up my tent wearing my helmet. You know, I want to get off my bike, I want to put my um, bike away, take the helmet off and just crack on. And I kind of want to transition from being geared up for motorcycling to being geared up for the outdoors in one step. And really what the single track jacket allows you to do is you get, you know, when you're riding, you can have the hood tucked away in the collar, but once you're off the bike and you're uh, at camp and you need to put the hood on, boom, it's there. There's some benefits of that. Um, and the one that I get kind of most um, excited again, <laughs> I get quite excited by this jacket, um, is the fact that it means I don't have to carry another jacket with me. I have one jacket that does my motorcycle riding and my camp outdoors experience. Um, and that allows me to take less gear, uh, which is kind of the key of my style of riding and maybe your style of riding. It's not about how much gear you can take, it's about having the right gear, which allows you to take less gear. Light is right. <laughs> One of the other features with the hood is that if it's absolutely hammering down with rain, you can put the hood on underneath your helmet. Um, and that's really, I mean, I think you just got to be pretty unlucky to be out when it's raining that hard, but it basically prevents the rain from getting down the back of your neck when you're riding. So the fabric that we've used in the single track jacket is a three layer waterproof breathable fabric. It feels very much like uh, kind of a high-end waterproof jacket that you would go to a major outdoor manufacturer and kind of try on for going walking up a hill. So it's a similar vibe to that. It's got a hydrostatic head of 28,000 millimeters. So you may or may not have heard of hydrostatic head. Um, we have another film um, on our YouTube channel that Dave here at Adventure Spec explains a bit more about that. But in essence, 28,000 millimeters is the same as 28 meters. So if you had a one inch um, piece of fabric and you had a column of water 28 meters uh, above that, you would need the pressure of 28 meters of water to push one drop through that fabric. So, um, you know, that kind of like relates to expensive and cheap waterproof garments that kind of look the same. Um, a cheaper waterproof garment might have a, a, a hydrostatic head of say 9,000 or 10,000 or something like that. Um, and in, in essence, that's for a light rain shower. Whereas this with a hydrostatic head of 28,000 millimeters is really designed to withstand a, a large volume of water. Um, and the key thing there, I think for motorcyclists is that when it's raining and we are riding through the rain, we are kind of exerting and putting a lot of force you know, through the waterproof uh, material that we're wearing. And that is why we've opted for something with such a high hydrostatic head. The three layer waterproof fabric is also ripstop. So the outer layer of that is ripstop. Um, 
ripstop material essentially if you get a tear if you're unlucky enough to get a tear in the material it won't continue all the way through it stops um, that tear um, and on top of the uh, shoulders elbows lower arms and hips is an extra layer of protection in the form of kevlar material the single track jacket does not come up with any body armor in it um, so it's really not designed as a protective layer um, it's designed as a waterproof outer layer that you would wear over your protection underneath it so it is not ce rated um, when i ride uh, if it's hot i will ride with something like the soup shirt underneath and potentially just the single track over the top of it um, like this photo of will uh, so he's been riding up here in Northumberland with me last year. The day started a little bit damp, so he's just put the single track on over the top of his super shirt. Um, but we've just done quite a tricky technical bit, so you can see he's unzipped it there. In winter here, so we're, what, in February here in, in, in England today. So if I was going out today, I would possibly put on the super shirt and then maybe the Baltic insulated and then put the waterproof single track over the top of that. Um, or I might even wear my linesman jacket, which has got body armor in it, and put the single tracker over the top of that. So the jacket weighs about 700 grams. It's pretty lightweight. Um, it's designed to pack into uh, our ADV layer pouch, which is part of our luggage system. Um, if you're watching this today, that hasn't launched yet, but I know that the factory is uh, working on the current production line so the chances are if you're watching this in the future you will be able to go and find the Magdan panniers and uh, pouches uh, so like I said one of those pouches was designed specifically for the single track jacket so you can have it on your luggage at all times we also make the Aquapack jacket which is a similar jacket in terms of waterproofing but it doesn't have a hood and um, it's a little bit lighter and packs a little bit smaller <laughs> So we've got these huge vents underneath the arm, which kind of come from almost this point to this point, and they unzip both ends. Um, and they're really designed so that, um, well, we kind of know that when you're riding, you could be riding through variable conditions, and one minute it's raining, the next minute the sun comes out. And really by adding these vents, it removes or reduces the need to be taking the jacket on and off, on and off, if you're overheating and getting hot. Um, once these are unzipped, I mean, you can get like so much air going through there. And the reasons why we put them under the side there is that if we put them on the back, sometimes they can in get interfered with by um, rucksacks. And also under underneath here, once they're zipped up and your arm is down, it really does a good job of keeping the water out and reducing kind of any ingress that way when you want them zipped up. So single track's been around for a couple of years now. Um, new for this year is we've made a slight um, colour tweak and we're working on some more colours. Um, one of the issues that we had with our previous versions was the reflective stripes. So we wanted to make them a little bit more subtle um, and reduce those. So we've opted for these reflective logos on the um, shoulders and the back. And the one at the back is kind of located as high up as I could get it on the neck. Uh, again, to, uh, so it's visible when you're riding with a rucksack. Um, but yeah, when it's dark, they, any, any, any light, it just picks up on these uh, reflective logos and does a great job of standing out. As you all know, as an adventure rider, you spend a lot of time stood up. Um, and you might be stood up riding through rain, um, puddles, mud, whatever. Um, and one of the features that we built into this was to have quite an exaggerated long tail. So it kind of comes over and, and covers your bum. Um, and that does a good job of keeping the, the, the muck out of your pants when you're riding. Um, it also means that when you're sat on the bike, it is another layer between your dry bum and a wet seat. Um, and also when you're sitting around camp at that, on that wet log or wet grass, um, it does a really good job of just keeping your bum dry. What is a throttle friendly chest pocket other than a bit of PR spin? Um, so, most outdoor manufacturers of clothing will have a chest pocket on the left breast because they assume you to be right-handed and you want to be able to have access that way. Um, we know as adventure riders that actually 
if you take your right hand off the bike, you're taking your hand off the, th the throttle and off the brake, which is not really what you want to do. So by allowing us to keep our right hand in control of the bike, it frees up our left hand to go in and out of the pocket. So this is a really interesting image. Um, I was shooting it the other day and um, it, for me, really kind of highlighted one of the kind of features of this. Um, so as you can see, we have the linesman jacket on the model and over the top of the linesman jacket is the single track jacket. Now, that linesman jacket is a size medium. That single track jacket is a size medium. All of our clothing in the broader sense is designed to be, if you're a size medium, our clothing should be a medium all the way through, with some exceptions that I will come back to. The thing that I want to draw your attention to here is look at the collar. So uh, when you are wearing a layering system, you're going to end up with lots of collars. You might have a mid layer up here, then an outer layer and then a waterproof layer. And if those garments are not designed to work with each other, the chances are the more you put on, the tighter all of those collars are going to get and it's going to become more uncomfortable. So with our gear, we've kind of deliberately exaggerated the collar fitting for each size. Um, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and I thought that this picture really highlighted it really, really well. Um, we do get asked questions about how our um, sizing system works. And in essence, it is as I explained, um, if you're a medium, you should be a medium throughout. However, what you need to consider is what you are likely to be wearing. So I am a size small, tiny human being, I know. Um, all my gear is a small. So when I've got my base layer, I got, or I've got my super shirt on, then I have my Baltic hybrid um, mid layer, and then I've got my linesman jacket, and then I've got my single track jacket over the top. By the time I've got all that gear on, it is feeling a little snug. It's not so snug or tight that I can't operate, but it is quite a snug fit. It's definitely not a relaxed fit. But that's a compromise that I'm prepared to make because I also want to be able to wear my single track jacket with a t-shirt on at camp or something or when I'm not riding or maybe just with the super shirt and my single tracker over the top. So you've kind of got to think about how you want to wear it and if you're going to wear all the gear where you're prepared to make your compromise. Once you've got all the gear on, are you okay with it being a little bit snug or uh, would you rather uh, have uh, everything really comfortable when you've got everything on but if you're only wearing one of those outer layers it's going to feel a little bit baggy so that really depends on your body shape and how you want to wear your gear. We're really proud of the single track jacket we spend the whole design team here spends a lot of time outdoors off the bike doing all sorts of stuff walking up hills and all the rest of it and we really kind of wanted to take that idea of the gear that we are wearing for our everyday outdoor activities, but make it suitable for motorcyclists. And I think one of kind of the, the biggest kind of um, ticks for us was seeing um, Aaron Steinman uh, ride around the world using our gear and specifically the single track jacket. So um, I don't know, maybe he's in Nepal here or something like that. But um, if you haven't found out much about Aaron, um, go and look him up. He did. I think 140 odd thousand kilometers on his KTM 500 EXC. Um, really, I think he's done the most miles on an enduro bike around the world of anyone that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, to have him wearing our gear is a real sign of, um, yeah, a sign of approval. So in this photo, we've got Chris here um, and he's wearing the Baltic insulator jacket, um, the new color that is on its way, depending on when you're watching this again. Um, he, he's got a single track that's going on over the top of that. So if he was going to ride with that, I would say that he's got a um, super shirt on underneath. So he's wearing his protective layer next to his skin and everything on top of that is just purely about comfort. Um, here we've got uh, Chris again. So he's got the linesman pants on um, and then the new single track over the top um, with his hood up. This was me last week out doing some testing on the new Honda CRF 300L with some of our parts on it and I was giving the single track a bit of a rundown. This is Will, I mentioned Will earlier, um, this is kind of showing that he's wearing the super shirt, his protective layer underneath with just the um, 
uh, single track jacket, jacket over the top. Will again, this is up on Hadrian's Wall here up in Northumberland. Um, Will's got the single track jacket on and the Mongolia pants um, and their style to work together. So there you have it, um, the Adventure Bet single track jacket. I think it's the one of the most versatile waterproof jackets that I own. Um, I don't have a dog, but I have small children. And I'm happy to walk the children in the rain <laughs> with my single back jacket on or go out to the shops or whatever. Um, it gets a lot of use. Um, and I'm off to Spain later this year and that will definitely be in my luggage uh, on the way down there. I hope it doesn't get used because <laughs> Spain's meant to be hot. But we'll, uh, we'll see. I've got a, a good chunk of England to get through before I get to Spain. Thank you for your time. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them uh, unless the community get to it first. See you soon, safe riding.